Mark Novak and I took this thing from zero to hero with a minimal amount of effort. Once upon a time, I thought I knew how to finish a stock. Mark showed me how to finish a stock. I am about to start tearing in on several of mine. And here we're going to show you exactly how to do yours for the low, low cost of free 99. Pat, real man of genius, gave me this fire damaged stock off his old tip. Here he is right there, right? Gave me this old fire damaged stock. And what I was demonstrating to him was that very, very light scraper strokes. We'll take this old finish right off the top of this gun and turn it. We're not even moving wood. We're just pulling off the old varnish off the top. No chemicals, no nothing. You can even take those browning finishes off the top of the stock using a scraper. And there's something that's just magical about being able to just peel off and it almost looks like dust. And there is no there's no wood there. That's all. All that is is finish. And, and this then, was in response to mm -hmm. trying to use 220 and right. constantly clogging up the paper. Right. If you try to sand these finishes off, they will absolutely hose up a piece of sandpaper. But with the finish pulled off the top, it does not. So here we have a piece of sandpaper with nothing on it. And we go into this area here where we've just pulled the finish off the top of it. And it's not clogging up the paper at all. Now you got to knock the loose sawdust off of what I'm talking about, the kind of clogging I'm talking about. Let's go right here where the finish has not been removed before. And you'll start getting these little balls of snot. You can't see it because we don't have the camera rigged up for it. But you get these little hard parts and eventually the whole piece of sandpaper will glaze over. Or... You can just take a scraper with an edge that's been rolled very, very gently. Just remove all of this. You can see it's just popping right off with, and I mean, I'm not putting a lot of effort into this. I'm just saying. So the key to this is a razor sharp scraper. Let me show you how. The first thing we have to do is you have to clamp this piece of steel down in something hard. We will take the old edge off of the back side of this. Okay, so now we don't feel the burr anymore. So we want to take the burr off of this. And then we'll draw file this. Now you always put the handle in your left hand and I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. And what I'm doing now is I'm just filing the top of this smooth. So now we're up over down, right? There we go. So what we're going to do here with this rock hard burnishing stick, you can use the back end of a of a drill uh, bit. There, there's a lot of hard metal laying around. A screwdriver actually works remarkably well for this. Um, is we're going to roll the edge. We're going to take this edge and we're going to push it over. And I don't know if that shows up, but there's actually a hook on it now. So we'll roll this one. I don't know if you can see the edge it's starting to show up shiny here. But that's a, that's a pretty good curl on this side. And you would say, well, how the heck is he able to make a piece of steel get out of the way? I got news for you. Steel is chewing gum. That's why I'm able to push a gun around with a two-ounce ball peen hammer. But we've now sharpened this side and this side, and there's a slight hook to it. So it's a square edge. Here, let me just... It's a square edge with a very slight hook on it, is all we've done, is we've taken the top of this piece of steel and popped it over a little bit. And there it is. Now we can go back and start scraping again, and I'll show you the improvement that sharp tools make. So we'll finish up the rest of this stock, and I'll tell you what, that thing is cutting like a dream. Look at that. That's just pulling all that varnish off the top, but not opening up the pores underneath, and that's the important part. Because one of the, one of the best tricks to not screw in a stock up is to not screw it up in the first place. And I know that sounds a little, a little off-putting, but, you know, don't suck. Do some research, make your tools ridiculously sharp. And now that we've scraped this, 
we can come back in with a fresh piece of 220. And 220 grit is the coarsest sandpaper I've touched this stock with. So now, when we sand this, see there's none of that gack building up on the surface like we had before, right? And this is just straight, smooth. We didn't provoke this wood and this is gonna look good. You don't just break out the 80 grit and start cutting through that stuff. That's ridiculous. You can use anything for a scraper, by the way. This is a bespoke piece of Sheffield steel that you can buy from, it used to be Woodcraft. Um, but you can use anything. I know there's a lot of people that talk about using glass, but it is relatively important that it has a little bit of flex. So you can get into slight hollows by flexing it with your fingers. Glass will not flex, and um, this is an edged cutting tool. It will cut you open if you're not careful. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about, the use of scrapers to remove old finish. You can even cut down through that browning finish with this stuff. Um, the browning, the Remington, it's sprayed on lacquer. Hey, look, I got a quarter of an inch of water on me kind of finish. If you go after it with chemicals, it will take all of this pre-existing stock fill and it'll open it all the way up down at the bottom of the pores and possibly damage the wood. So I really do not advocate the use of chemicals in stripping stocks. You go in with a scraper first, and then when you get all the finish off the top, then you come in and you finish out with sandpaper, and it makes this beautiful. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like. Oh, yeah. You see, that's a gorgeous chunk of walnut hiding underneath all that, right? Yeah, buddy. Look at that noise. Huh. So we didn't cut down below the layer of the wood because we didn't cut down we don't have any fuzzing issues there's no no grain gonna raise here which allows us to cut straight to the danish oil and this danish oil has a slight red aniline tint to it which is correct for a 1930s era 22 it looks good you can see that though the wood's just sucking this up Look at that, nice and smooth. I mean, that is, and there's the color red it is. So we'll just do the whole stock in this and let it sit and we'll keep it wet. You know, I only sanded down to 220 on this stock. Don't polish the wood, polish the finish. Once this oil gets into the pores and it oxidizes, it will get hard. And then once it's hard, we'll polish the finish, not the wood. So, I mean, you can go with a 320 if you have to, but never, the cabinet makers will tell you that you don't get wood really, really shiny because it doesn't take the finish. You've got to have something to bite on. So spend your time after, you know, two, three coats of this oil hardens. We'll walk in and probably it'll, it'll be steel wooled twice and then we'll go in with 800 grit and we'll sand it in and it will look stunning. It's kind of like what the London guys do, the London oil finish. Um, they spend a lot more time because, let's face it, their customers are not going to spend three to $4,000 to have the, a finish put on a chunk of walnut on a 22. But in this particular case, we can get close. Important thing about this oil is it's not a coat. This is an application of oil. So we're, we will apply this, we will allow it to soak in, and then we'll towel it off and let it, let it oxidize, let it polymerize and get hard. Then we'll come back over it with another application, let it set for 10 or 15 minutes, and then wipe it off. And then when we're all done, we can just steel wool it down with some 4 aught. It's a beautiful finish. Um, it's easy to repair. And if we had to shoot this gun right now, we could wipe this off the surface, put it back together again, and take it outside and run it with the oil still wet, and you wouldn't know. So I will leave you with this thought. There is no such thing as gun oil. There are finishes, and there are lubricants. Lubricants are designed to not oxidize, not polymerize, and to stay liquid. Finishes are designed to polymerize, to oxidize, and get hard and fill this bundle of soda straws that is this piece of wood up with something that will oxidize and kick down and look really good when we're done with it. This is a casting wax that I have. And it, 
it's, it's used for making lost wax castings. And what we're doing here is we're just heating it up and running it on the stock here. You can use the, the toilet bowl rings, but I happen to have, this is a harder wax. It sets up uh, really nice, and it's also this beautiful color. And all we're doing is just putting wax on a stock, and then we're going to rub it out. And what the wax will do is give it that nice sheen. A little bit more. I don't want to get the surface of the wood hot. I'm using the hot air to melt the wax, and then the wax gets melted onto the stock. And then you can see where it's just been everywhere. And it's not that bad. I mean, you can actually touch it. A lot of waxes, if you get them hot, they'll burn the hell out of you. But this stuff won't because it's really low temperature. And what this wax was designed for was not gun stocks. It was designed where you could make a model of something, coat the model, the wax model in ceramic, and then melt the wax out. It's what lost wax is. And then you pour metal in. So in this particular case, we're just going to do that. And we're going to come back in and rub it down and rub all this wax off the surface and get this beautiful sheen right here. And the whole gun's going to look like that when I get done with it. There it is. You just you use a scraper to not mess up the, the, the surface. You sand down the 220. Several coats of Danish oil with about a one day drying time. This is a, a little bit accelerated here because this particular stock, we didn't unfill the pores. The pores were still full. So the oil set up on a surface beautifully and bang, here we go. So less is more, seriously. So here you go. I gently conserved. We boiled out the barrel. We did everything we needed to do. And it's a really nice looking gun that doesn't look like it's been done. And that's the trick, is to get in and get out without it looking. This is plausible that this thing lived in some museum somewhere. And, you know, as always, it's been a pleasure, guys. And I got to tell you what, I love you.